Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome to the video. Welcome to my garage. This video is going to be episode number eight in the Baja front suspension build. This is going to be the last episode. And in this episode, the suspension is basically done. So we're really just going to walk through it and take a look at everything and kind of recap what the design was and how it turned out. So what we're looking at here is a A-arm front suspension system. This is on the ratchet chassis. This is very similar to what I had designed on the front of the Mahler chassis here. This system worked out pretty well, but I wanted a system that was a little bit bigger, capable of larger tires, and um, basically just designed for a little bit more abuse. So the system I designed for this chassis, the ratchet chassis, follows the same basic principles as that design. However, this design is larger and it follows a little bit better uh, let's call it geometry rules, meaning this suspension has a little bit less or almost zero bump steer as it goes through the suspension and it, tr it holds its camber a little bit more true and it utilizes every possible inch of the wheels and I guess what I mean by that is I was real really careful when I designed this setup so that it utilizes every inch of the wheel as it possibly can. Meaning, you can see here the spindle comes to within about a half inch of the wheel there and even the, the lower uniball here is actually embedded inside the wheel. So it's utilizing as you know the longest suspension arms that it possibly can for the best travel utilizing these wheels. This design is a little bit unique in that the hubs that this uses are the hubs from a Toyota 4Runner. And then to match those hubs, I'm using a set of takeoff wheels from a Toyota Tacoma, but you can pretty much use any Toyota wheel or any wheel that's got the, uh, this is a six inch on 5.5 inch bolt pattern. And these wheels are 16 inch diameter they're seven inches wide from the inside of the bead to the inside of the bead and the most well not the most important but one very important thing that you need to note is that from the hub mounting flange to the edge of the wheel here is five inches because the way that I designed this like if this wheel had a six inch back spacing meaning the wheel would be another inch further this way it wouldn't work because it would then come in contact with things like the upper ball joint and the control arms would start to make contact and and all sorts of things wouldn't work so this is specifically designed for these wheels so as it's set up right now and I have not completely adjusted it because I don't have tires yet so I can't completely fine-tune the adjustments until I have tires on there because I won't know exactly when my chassis would come in contact with the ground. But what I've done so far is I've set it up for basically zero camber so the wheels are straight up and down. The toe is set to zero right now although this is all going to be taken apart and put back together before I actually get it on the road so none of that is too important. The bump stops if you can tell this little ring right here that's a ring that I machined so that when you take the bump stop and put it up in here, this is a little half inch spacer that pushes the bump stops down half an inch. That's on bump stops like this that are just fitting in the can. That's what I do to, oh, it's actually, you can actually see it spinning around in there a little bit. It's a little bit loose. So as I get my tires on here and I'm fine tuning, you know, how close I want the chassis to get to the ground, which was probably going to be about two inches. I'll make that adjustments with these. I'll either machine a larger spacer or a smaller spacer, whatever I got to do. So I set it up so that this completely bottoms out before the chassis hits the ground. But I won't really do that until I'm getting ready to actually drive the chassis and I've got my tires and all that. And then for a full droop, that's just limited by my limited straps right here. Right now these are 18 inch straps and then I can make some adjustments here as far as dialing them in. Right now I've got them all the way out. So let's, uh, on this side over here, you can see I've got the spring taken off so that I can actually move this side. So let's take this little block of wood out here and let's drop this all the way to the ground 
take a measurement from the spindle to the ground and then let's compress it all the way and then we'll take another measurement and we'll see how much travel it has. Alright, so if I take this board out, let it drop all the way to the ground, make sure that my strap is tight, and then if I take my tape measure, I'm going to center, center my steering here a little bit. If I take my tape measure, and find a fixed point on the spindle and I'm just going to go to the well let's see I'm going to go to the top of this machine flange on the spindle here and I am at let's call it 9.75 inches so right now I'm at nine and three quarters now I'm going to take this and I'm going to push it all the way up all the way until I hit the bump stop and the bottom the bump stop out and then I'll be at full compression and then we'll take another measurement. Okay, now I'm here at full compression. Now I'm gonna measure from the ground to the top of the machined surface just like I did at the bottom. And I am at 34 inches. So we had 9 and 3 quarters and 34. Alexa, what is 34 minus 9.75? 34 minus 9.75 is 24.75. 24 Ooh, damn. 24.25. Let's call it 24. 24 inches. That is so awesome. That's more than I... That's more than I expected, and I'm probably not going to have that much when I dial it in because at 24 inches, the chassis is probably sitting on the ground, and I won't have it set up like that. But keep in mind, right now, 24 inches, and the track width to the outside of the wheels on this Baja is 71 inches. So it's not really very wide. It's, I mean, it's not a big Baja. You know, I designed this off of Mahler. It's a little bit bigger than Mahler, but not a lot. Uh, the track width is 71 inches. The track width center line of the wheels is 64 inches. I mean, that's just a little bit over five feet. So, man, getting 24 inches out of a Baja that's that narrow is, I'm, I'm be honest with you, I'm really very proud of that. That's, this design optimizes everything that it possibly can. But either way, right now it's 24 inches. Let's take a look at lock to lock. Okay, so right now we are at full compression. It's sitting on the bump stop and the bump stop is completely compressed. And right here, I mean, there's no bindage, of course, on the upper uniball. There's no bindage on the lower uniball. Those can go as far as they want. And with the way that the steering links rotate at the uh, rack and pinion, there's obviously no binding there. So our limiting factor here is definitely going to be the Heim for the steering link right here. Now you can see, if you can see, right now there's about an eighth of an inch of gap in there and this rotates fine. Let's go to full lock in one position. So I'm going to come over here and turn it. All the way in one direction. And we come over here and if you look it's close but there's still about an eighth of an inch in there and um, it's not tight at all. I can't rotate it around as much as I was before, but there's still some, some slack in there. Now let's rotate it to the other direction. Now if we look in here, actually the gap gets bigger there. So that's not a problem at all. Okay, so we know at full compression, there's no binding at all. So let's drop it 
down to the ground and see how it works at full droop. Okay, now it's at full droop and it is straight. It's really hard to see because of the shadows, but there's about a sixteenth gap there. Maybe maybe a little bit more. But either way, it's it's loose. The link comes close to the upper arm, but it's not contacting anything. There's nothing binding up at the rack. Um, this is close, but it's not actually hitting anything. Let's take it, now when I turn, there's a bar that's going to come out here. So let's take it to one extreme and see if anything contacts. So let's turn it all the way to the right. I don't think I would ever be able to droop more than that. So if we look in here, there's still, I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see that. There you go. There's still a little bit of a gap there. The heim is not bound up. One thing that I just noticed is when I do that, the tie rod pretty much comes in contact with the upper arm right there. I don't really feel it if I rotate it. I don't really feel it scraping, but I don't see a gap under there, so that is that's tight. This I would definitely say you can't droop any more than that, obviously. No clearance issues here, so no problem with there. So this is my limiting factor here, which is fine. So no more droop. Let's turn it the other way, make sure that everything's fine that way as well. Actually, something feels like it's binding. Let's take a look. Ha, ah, interesting. Actually, what's binding is the steering arm is catching this rubber boot as I turn in that direction. So let me straighten it out and see if I can just adjust that boot. So you can see here, that boot's really close. And when I was turning that, oops, that's well, not very tight. When I was turning that in, it was catching the boot. Well, let's try it without the boot and see if the boot is the only thing that it's catching on. Okay, turned, turned pretty easy that time. Let's see what we got. So first, if we look down here, it doesn't actually mechanically contact the rack at all. It just must, must squish in the boot a little bit. And what do we got here? If I grab this, oh, that's tight. That's actually tight. So we are, yeah, we're contacting right there. If you can see that, that's contacting the heim. So this actually needs to be adjusted. And I would do that right here just by turning this in a little bit. It needs to be adjusted. I'd probably take take about an inch away from full droop there. <laughs> that'll solve this problem and there's a very good chance that that'll solve the issue of it catching on the boot and probably the issue of it coming in contact with the upper control arm. Alright, so we found a couple of limitations. Maybe instead of 24 inches we're at 23. Actually, let's just play it safe and call it 22 because I will adjust this strap up a little bit so that it full droop None of that binds, and I also want probably about another inch just of stretch because once these start getting, you know, stretched over and over and over, they're going to get a little bit longer. So I'll crank that up probably to about 22 inches, which is still, you know, fantastic. Still real excited about that. Um, let's, let me see if I can set up the camera so that we can make sure that we still don't have any bump steer. Because if you remember in episode, I don't know what it was, two or three, something around there, we were trying to set it up with our steering geometry so that we didn't have any noticeable bump steer. And we didn't at that point, but let's make sure that that followed through all the way to the finished product here. All right, so right now we're at full compression. I'm gonna drop this down, and what we're looking to see is if the steering changes at all this way. I'm not making any changes to the actual steering input. 
So we're, I'm hoping that as this goes down, this stays pretty much untouched. You might see some, some changes in camber a little bit because as it comes down, it's gonna pull in a little bit. But what we're looking for is steering. If you notice though, when I go up and down here, oh, this is heavy. All right, that's good. So let's call it 22 inches of travel with no binding whatsoever. Now let me throw a couple of facts and figures at you. Like I said before, right now the track width outside of wheel to outside of the wheel is 71 inches. That'll get a little bit wider when it's got tires on it, but just for reference, that's 71. Track width center line of wheel to center line of wheel is 64 inches. Um, this is made up with 2006 Toyota 4Runner two-wheel drive front hubs and I've got 16 by 7 Tacoma wheels and the shock absorbers in here have 12 inches of stroke if I had to do this again I would use 14 inch stroke shock absorbers but I believe since there's really not much weight up here I won't have an issue with that but if I did it again I would go with 14 I have four inch bump stops on here. You could do it with two inch, but since I don't have bypass shocks, I wanted the bump stops to have a little bit more engagement before I actually bottom out. And this system itself is set up to use a 33 to 35 inch tire. If you use a 33 inch tire, your scrub radius is gonna be about one inch. If you use a 35 inch tire, your scrub radius would be pretty much zero. Kingpin angle or angle of inclination, which is the line going from the upper uniball or ball joint through to the lower ball joint is 10 degrees. So it's, it's set back 10 degrees this way. My caster angle is seven degrees. And on this suspension setup, that is set up in the chassis itself. So the, the front portion of this chassis here actually rakes up seven degrees. That's where the seven degrees of caster comes into play. The lower control arms, if you can see, are mounted with bushings. However, the upper control arms are mounted with adjustable himes. And the reason I did that is then you can adjust your camber this way and that way by adjusting the length of the himes. You can, us, you can also adjust your caster angle. You can adjust it this way or that way by taking those himes and making one longer and one shorter, you can actually rotate that upper control arm this way to make some adjustments to your caster angle. So that's pretty much it, guys. That's a brief overview of the front suspension on the ratchet chassis. I'm really happy with it. I'm so stoked how everything panned out just like my designs did. If you find this really interesting, you can go back. As a matter of fact, I'll put a link in the description to to the other series because there is a one through seven as well where I go into some real detail on some of the aspects of this suspension. Of course we'll get to play with this a little bit more once the chassis is actually rolling and driving. Obviously there's a lot of room for improvement on this but this has so much improvements on it from the Mahler chassis and I'm really hoping that this suspension is capable of some serious abuse. So I'm looking forward to being able to test some of that out. In the meantime, the good news is I'm going to start working on the rear suspension now, so one of my next videos coming up will be episode one, which will be a conceptual video of what I'm going to be doing for the rear suspension. So thanks for watching the video, guys. I hope it's helping you out with whatever projects you might be working on, and I hope to see you on the next video. Take care.